This is Don Kincaid with the Kincaid Files, and you're listening to Wrestling with Entertainment, baby. And everything in between every Saturday and interviewing all your favorite wrestlers every Wednesday on YouTube and Castbox. Sponsored by Rogue Energy and Player One Coffee. I am, of course, your host, James J. Alongside the leader of Squaw, Squaw Kaliko Yacht, who may be here, who may not be here, was he ever really here to begin with? Uh, but who is actually here, the American Scooter Dust? Despite all evidence, Boston does not actually make me feel good. And, uh, it was a good week for us as we, um, interviewed Don Kincaid last week on the show. Oh, what a, what a guy, Don. Oh, man. And, uh, yeah, I don't think I've ever expected interviewing interviewers when I started this podcast, but the stories that we got out of Don really makes me glad I reached out and seen if there was something there. And there was a lot there. No, there oh, yeah, there, there really was. And especially if you've been with us from the beginning, <laughs> you, you, you may make a parallel, and we will not blame you for making that parallel. We will not mention what that parallel is, but it's just, it's eerie to a degree how much Don how, and, and, and what Don represents the the hard work and, and, and the effort and everything that he's put in basically when I grow up I want to be like Don I want to be like Don too um, but I mean we might have the opportunity as he just had a tag team match. I'm not sure if he survived it or not. Um, Don, you know. you're, dead, you're dead, man. <laughs> no. Uh, next week on the show, on um, this upcoming Wednesday, we have Cody Hawk. Oh, Ooh. wow. Just um, a true legend in his own way. Uh, Maybe almost well um, travel seasoned veteran we've had on the show, only second to little yeah. Bob. Uh, um, yep. I mean, at, at, at this point, we might as well call ourselves the podcast that gets your favorite wrestlers best friends. <laughs> and uh, there's a lot of great um, stories and um, things that you might not have even expected listening to that interview. Uh, and of course, if you don't believe me, well, um, here's a small clip of that interview. Okay. Hmm. I didn't... I'm trying to think. Don't forget the book. King I, okay. okay. <laughs> Be, being an Ohio native, which sport has the superior team from Ohio? Uh, well, number one, I'm not a fan of the Bengals. I'm not a fan of the uh, Browns either, so I'm out there for football. <laughs> um, I do follow the Reds a little bit, uh, but not too much. Um, uh, our hockey teams are here. They're not not so good. The the Blue Jackets, uh, and, and we don't have about. Well, I guess we do have the the Cavs. Um, so I don't know, man. I, I don't I don't follow too many of those predetermined sports. I like the real <laughs> ones. <don't> <laughs> the best answer yeah. ever. Oh, well. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> All right, and uh, the week after that, we got the Vontas. Um, that's uh, Wednesday, the twenty second. Um, another incredible interview. Very different from uh, Cody because he's only three years into the business, so kind of throwing all the spectrums. 
the week of we're closing out um this incredible twenty twenty one with uh Izzy Shaw. And uh next year we have um Angela Lane and the Renegade Twins. So keep uh keep a lookout for uh at Wrestling with E on Twitter for specific dates for those two interviews. I mean, have, have we established a method to determining which renegade twin will be who? Oh, we have not. <laughs> I, I think I'm just going to say, Robin, this is a question for you. Charlotte, this question's for you. But if it's just, you know, Robin pretending to be both of them, I'm not going to lie. I might be a little pissed. I might be impressed. <laughs> All right, Scooter, are we done putting ourselves over? Yes, and I, yep, and thus, with no. every, oh. well, I mean, unless you want to, unless you want to do this, James. Yeah, uh, it was not a great day for wrestling, uh, in the wrestling world. Um, Black Jack Lanza passed away earlier this week. Um, one of the more prominent roles to somebody that maybe wasn't as appreciated backstage as we might even realize. Uh, but Scooter, can you uh, maybe elaborate more on Black Jack Lanza? Well, born John Lonzo. Better known by his real name, Blackjack Lanza, along with his long-term tag team partner, Blackjack Mulligan. Lanza was one half of the Blackjacks. Black cowboy hat wearing, cowboy boots stomping, rugged hombres who drew money wherever they went. From the 60s to the 80s, Lanza wrestled for promotions such as the AWA, the WWA, and even the WWF. Winning the AWA World Tag Team Championship, the WWA World Tag Team Championship, and the WWWF. World Tag Team Championship alongside Mulligan. He is a member of both the WWE Hall of Fame and the Professional Wrestling Hall of Fame. A native of, of Minneapolis, Minnesota, like all the greats are, uh, which makes, um, you know, which makes perfect sense that his career started with Vern Gagne. Uh, and then, he, f- funny enough, he found his way down to Birmingham uh, yeah. for NWA Mid America, and then touring around the Midwest before returning back to the AWA. Uh, a stint in Mid Atlantic Championship Wrestling, uh, then his time in the uh, Indiana based WWA, and then finally uh, in 73, he joined the WWF. And then left the company uh, later that in the year, and then seventy in seventy five, uh, along with Mulligan, the Blackjacks joined uh, the WWF uh, and became regulars. Um, and is one of the and was one of the few wrestlers that when. Uh, and, and 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 this is crazy. He was one of the few singles wrestlers to be given tenure by Vince McMahon, who promised that Lanza would receive one world championship match a month. I'm not making this up. Um there was a couple, there was a, some time in there, uh, where he would, they, he would wrestle for, uh, big time wrestling, uh, in the late seventies, would work for Georgia championship wrestling. Um, he would return to the AWA, uh, feuding with, uh, former manager Bobby Heenan. Um, 
and the Blackjacks would end up breaking up in 84, and and uh, Lancer would retire from wrestling in 1985. After that, Lanza would work for the WWF for the rest of his life. Literally for the rest of his life as a road agent and producer. Uh, in 2004, Lanza uh, inducted his inducted Bobby Heenan into the WWE Hall of Fame, uh, and then two years later, Lanza along with Blackjack Mulligan were inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame by Bobby Heenan. He was uh, inducted into the Professional Wrestling Hall of Fame in 2016 as a member of the Blackjacks. Stan Hansen did the honors for him as Lanza was too ill to attend. Uh, Lanza married his wife, Barbara Jean, on September 28th, 1957. And they were married ever since. Almost... uh, Six sixty four years. That's incredible. Uh, and then uh, this past Wednesday, Lanza unfortunately uh, departed this world to the next. Uh, he was eighty six years old. I mean, you know, wrestling. When we talk about a wrestling that's usually there's a string of tragedy uh, connected to it. Um, nothing, nothing bad with uh, Lanza. I mean, if anything, this was a success story. Oh, oh, absolutely. I mean, Lanza didn't, you know, it didn't cause problems wherever he worked. He. He was revered by all the promoters he worked for. He wasn't a uh, he wasn't a womanizer. He wasn't a drunk. He he wasn't you know he wasn't coked out. He was dare I say straight edge before straight edge was a thing. I mean, yeah, okay, I'll admit he, you know, be being Bill as a blackjack, he, he probably had a beer or two. Let's not <laughs> let's not kid ourselves here. Yeah, <laughs> but but th- but then again, he's also he was also from Minnesota, where they, you know, eat fish that's been you know pickled in you know drain cleaner. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you know, he, still, you know, and the thing is, is that a yeah, Lanza gets remembered for his, you know, time as an agent. But when it, when it came to the Blackjacks, people really thought of Mulligan more because he's he's the Wyndham. He's got the legacy. What? He's got the family legacy. Lanza, and yeah, you know, and if you ask me, Lanza was the superior. Uh, of the blackjacks and probably should have had you know more attempts at a singles uh career but you know he was happy with his career he was happy with his life and you know what that that is a life well lived i can't agree more um of course uh, our thoughts and prayers are with uh the family um, now on to an even more subject. Jeff Hardy was released by WWE, um, yesterday, I believe. Um, it came after, um, uh, being sent home after quote unquote a rough night, uh, at a live event. Um, Honestly, it's just sad because it was supposed. This was kind of the redemption tour, and it just wasn't that. And the sad part is, and I'm gonna I'm gonna be real here for a minute. Um, 
as, as somebody who personally knows what Jeff Hardy's struggles have been like, as someone in recovery, you know, outside of the wrestling world, it 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 is heartbreaking. It is absolutely heartbreaking to see that Jeff, who we all thought was finally on an upward, you know, an upward bound towards, you know, a life beyond, you know, any, any sort of addiction, you know, the thing they tell you is that addicts never stop being addicts, and that's absolutely true. Yeah. But the thing about addiction is it's a disease, and it, it while it can never be truly defeated, it can be in remission, and that's what we all thought was happening with Jeff Hardy. And the really sad part is that the is that WWE offered Jeff Hardy help and offered to send him to rehab. By all by all means, they, they you know by all means Jeff probably. You you know, if I was Vince, I'd be debating whether or not to actually give Jeff help. You know, because he's you know, you know, I don't want to say it's cried wolf, but he's you know bit the hand that feeds him a couple too many times. But the fact that Jeff turned it down. You think the reason that he got fired was because he turned it down? Because that was ultimately what made him uh, get fired in 2003 as well. I I would not be uh, surprised. Um, this is... Uh, it's it's, it's, it's heartbreaking, honestly. Yes, it is. It, it's it's beyond heartbreaking because the first rule is you have the first step is you have to admit you have a problem, and you well, know, I'll, I'll, I'll open this up, um, Jeff. It seemed like he was in a good place. He was getting to work he needed to be. But it kind of seems whenever he kind of goes back to WWE or even wrestling in general, that's kind of when his problems kind of start when it comes to these uh, addiction issues. Could wrestling kind of be Jeff Hardy's um, trigger? Enabler. Um, honestly, I'm. As much as I. As much as I would love for to think that there's something else at hand here and that it's. And that, you know, illegal substances are not the reason Jeff Hardy is now out of a job. You know, there's only so many times you can, you know, you can, for, for, forgive me for use of this term, and there's only so many times you can piss on someone's face and convince them it's rain. What? And, and nevertheless, I hope Jeff gets the help. He, he really needs because he's he's running out of time yeah. at this point. He, the, I mean, this could have essentially been his out of the alarm clock going off for him, honestly. I will say this. I think 
Jeff Hardy needs to stay away from the wrestling ring altogether. I think Jeff needs to retire altogether. And and maybe, maybe in five years if he has if he if he hasn't if he hasn't left this world, and he's finally straightened him out, then he should come back to a a a a, a backstage role in and you know. A in any yeah, he should never be. He should never be in the ring again. Um, and of course, uh, Darks and Trails go off to his family, and we do put. And with um, Jeff the best. Yes. Uh, um, and uh, the tragedy just keeps rolling in. Um, Chris Jericho was hospitalized uh, yesterday uh, for um, nothing. Um, nothing was specified, but something. And it was a coronavirus, but something treatable. They said. Um, yes, uh, he was. Uh, he was on the. He was on a uh, tour with Bozzy in the UK. Yes. Uh, he was in Wales. Uh, he was already over. Uh, so he, yeah, he was. He was supposed to be. Uh, was supposed to do a show in uh, Swansea, Wales. Um, and uh, he had before just performed a show in Bournemouth, England. And it was scheduled to wrap up England uh, this weekend. Um, um, but uh, he was seen outside the uh, the Hard Rock Cafe, Hard Rock Cafe on Oxford Street, um, and appeared fine in the photo, but was hospitalized. That hospitalization several hours later. Um, and was apparently also active on Twitter as of one hour before his hospitalization. Hmm. So it's kind of just uh, obviously a sudden thing. Yeah, and you know, nothing. Again, it's not COVID. Uh, he's he he will uh, we will be uh, updated as uh. And as uh, this happens, we wish Chris a speedy recovery, and you know, for, and you know, yeah. if, if if we need if we need to take him back to health, we will. <laughs> I mean, I don't know about you, but I could go on singing on a fat face dipshit, yeah, 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 forever. Oh, can we do more? Um. Next thing on the, and we of course was um, Chris the best and hope for a speedy recovery. I don't think it's going to be too much longer. As somebody who was born in the same hospital as Chris Jericho, yes, he will have a speedy recovery. I guarantee it. Um, maybe some good, actually some good news. Um, Trent is back. Uh, yes! He, he uh, made his return to AEW Dynamite this past Wednesday, um, unveiling a new look, um, leaner, hopefully healthier. Um, Scooter, your um, thoughts? Well, having, um, known Trent because uh, he's NYWC born and raised. Um, good, good lord, man! Like, you know, it, it's it almost seemed like Trent, who, by the way, he's now resuming being Trent Beretta, not Trent with a question mark. 
Trump is not Trump anymore. Uh, yeah, Excalibur and and uh, and Tony Schiavone were referring to him as Tread Beretta. Um, I mean, they also called Malachi Black Tommy End and Alistair Black. <laughs> oh God, Matthew's gonna have fun with that one. Um, that'll put butts in seats. Um, he looks great. Yeah, it, it might have seemed like he he was gonna get lost in that mid card shuffle as part of best friends, and now he 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 looks ripped. He looks shredded. He looks like he could be a serious threat to the singles division. Uh, that and, of course, his incredible, the most over-mother in professional wrestling today, Ruby Sue. Right. And I feel like that has been kind of the story of Trump, unfortunately, is that he always had that, he always could have been, yeah. you know, that main event player. He always could have got that main event push, but unfortunately, injury would kind of prevent him from getting there. Um, I mean, he's coming back from a pretty bad one now, spinal surgery, so that's, yeah. um, you know, is what it is. Um, maybe not as severe now in days, because, I mean, with um, uh, medical and all that stuff, you could practically prevent people from dying at this point. Um, so do you see that this version of Trent sticking, sticking around and kind of staying where he is, so to speak? Oh, I, I hope so. I hope so. I hope so, too. Alright, um, speaking uh -huh. of, um, more returns, uh, there's rumors that Scotty Too Hotty might be going for one more run. Scooter, your dog? As in he's going for one more jog? <laughs> no, he's going to try and be a wrestler again. Oh, why? Why? Why not? Uh, I mean, I mean, he. I mean, his non compete clause ends, uh, yeah, oh, um, December 23rd, uh. There's a no compete clause for, uh, agents? Yeah. Which makes me think he was, uh, he, which makes me think he was clear to wrestle. Was he not clear to wrestle? I'm assuming with agents that they also have to pass a physical in case they need to be involved in any on-air skirmishes. I That's mean, why we've seen Pat Buck and Adam Pierce. But he was also an agent for know, NXT, not WWE. And yeah, yeah, but then again, you know, you know, it's Sean running things. You could probably, you know, probably said, "Oh yeah, if you, you ever want to wrestle, just you know, just let us know. We'll, we'll, we 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 could, we could do something, you know." I mean, it's if it comes back great, I I. I I can't see this being such a big thing, though. I mean... I mean... I'm not mad at a Scotty Two Body return, and, you know, one last hurrah kind of put a bow on that career. Because in, see. like, two, the year 2000, 
I I could honestly say The Rock was number one, and Too Cool was maybe number two as in popularity. Yeah, that's it. It's yeah, I I I, I would I I would agree on that. Yeah. And I and I, and I had a thought in my head and oh that's it I only see one I only see one even idea that even makes sense beyond just taking a random indie date and that's getting involved with the with Alpha Academy and getting Otis to go back to Dewey the caterpillar <laughs> while he does the worm. <laughs> That would be pretty cool, but he's it's not going to be in WWE unfortunately. But nope. that would have been that would have been the money right there. Yep, it would have. Um well, let's see where that goes. Um and the know. last ending on a Ooh. high note, um Hacksaw Jim Duggan, Chance of Free. Um Great news or the greatest news? Great news. Uh, I had the pleasure of, of meeting Hacksaw back in an NYWC show, uh, where where that that I brought my uh my father and my uncle to, because they were big Hacksaw Jim Duggan fans, and they took a picture. He he took a picture free of charge for me. Yeah. You know, because I told the guy in security, like, you're not making my pay. You're not making my family pay. I'm telling you that right now. Um, because you have yes. so much pull in the uh, NYWC. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I could be no, because it, well, because the guy was my friend. <laughs> <laughs> my 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 buddy Raleigh, who still who still uh. Handles uh, security to this day, but yes, the greatest news, the greatest news, absolutely. Um, one more piece of news. Hmm. So the WWE is pursuing more and more documentaries, and the WWE is contacting AEW for permission to use former stars hmm. for these documentaries. Well, I mean, uh, JR is a given. I mean, AEW is not going to say, no, don't use JR. Uh, Khan, Tony Khan has said uh, the WWE representatives were very nice and he's considering the offer and open to talking to them. Uh, he did say that he has not spoken to Vince directly regarding anything. Uh, this is what he said. They are doing a lot of biographies and they want to use some of the people here. And I think that's the thing. It's probably going to come out sooner or later in interviews. Or they want to interview some of the people that wrestled here that used to wrestle there. And some of the people that have had a history in other libraries they own. Uh... Khan notes that he did work with the, the WWE for the Jericho interview on the Steve Austin Broken Skull session. Uh, and Khan did say that they were very classy and he has nothing bad to say about, uh, about it. He says, uh, uh, he says you don't know if they'll see, uh, you know, going head to head uh, in terms of competing with the WWE, but he is. Considering a bunch of the requests on the biographies, so it's it, it's very good to see that that working relationship, uh, at least in terms of putting the fans before, you know, you know, uh, business uh, and um, and and yes, we did reveal that uh, Diamond Dallas Page is set to be. Uh, the next uh, Broken Skull session, I believe. I believe it's the first uh, uh, episode of the the new season of the Broken Skull sessions, if they're even going by season. 
of course, on Peacock. Everything's in seasons. Yes. Uh, WrestleMania uh, season thirty-seven. Uh, however, Diamond Dallas Page was not under AEW contract when they uh, uh, filmed. You think that it's um, you know, just there. Because it seemed like Tony Khan wasn't really showing his hand in that interview. That we might just see AEW guys on, like, maybe a Broken Skull Lance? Like, uh, a Kenny Omega or, or a Cody? I. Cody, I can see. Kenny Omega, definitely not. I mean, a year ago, we would have said, could we see Chris Jericho on the Broken Skull sessions, and the answer would probably be no, oh, but no. That, that was in the works uh, before Jericho even joined AEW. But... That- that was in the works before Jericho even joined AEW, so there, there's there's some wiggle room there. Uh, in, in in terms of AEW, it just feels like there's no limit. No, you know, are, are, are we are we gonna see Johnny Hungy on the Broken Skull sessions? No chance in hell. Uh, <laughs> that I agree with you. <laughs> we have uh, not seen John so Yeah. Uh, Damn kid, why are you yeah, so I damn did. hungry? Uh that was a terrible impersonation. <laughs> I mean also be like, hey Johnny, where's your neck? Um I'm sorry, John, you look like you've lost your neck. I'm sorry. Um <laughs> I'm sorry, he he looks like two horn swoggles. <laughs> oh, he's, 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 he's gonna kill me. Um, One on top of the other. At least Alex stays the same. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. And, and that, John Silver is actually two kids in a body suit on top of each other's shoulders. <laughs> but that explains why he wanted to be Bampy. <laughs> God! Oh, God. Oh, I'm gonna die. Uh, <laughs> Wait until the episode's over. Thank you. Uh, yeah, we're yeah we're not gonna see. Uh, you know, I I I could see maybe. Oh God! Oh no! Oh no! I was gonna say maybe Andrade, possibly. No. Uh, like maybe if they if they did Alistair and Zelina, I could see them doing Andrade with Charlotte. Uh, well, they broke up supposedly. Oh, great! Awesome! Yay! So she stays. Hooray! Good, good, good. Uh, uh, it gives me a chance to uh, continue being uh, uh, picking Charlotte Flair for uh, Tyler Breeze's uh, Twitch Royal Rumbles. Cool. Well, no, if they're doing a Selena Vega documentary, which I mean, she won the Queen of, she's the first ever Queen of the Ring in WWE. Um. Then yeah, they they're gonna want her husband to comment on it. That that I mean, makes sense. I mean yes, they. Uh, and plus also, they, you know they, you know, they they they've worked out deals. You know, they've had Dixie Carter, you know, speak about Kurt Angle. They had the you know the the Christian Cage Ric Flair exchange. Yes. With Impact and and everything. Uh, so yes, for former talent, it'll work. For AEW's, you know, executive vice presidents, no. Cody's the only exception to that. Um, and 
not even considering that Cody has his own reality show now and his own, you know, America's got really weird talent show. Uh, <laughs> this guy really hyped Hollywood to have some uh, Yes, yes. He's more Hollywood, Hollywood Hulk- than I am, and I'm the next city over. Hollywood, Hulk Cody, um, uh, I mean, he's on a, he's on a show called Go Big Show, and every time it's mentioned, Paul White goes, where? <laughs> uh, if they do do a talent exchange, WWE and AEW, who should AEW go for? That's an interesting, um, Little concept there. Well, the thing is, is that there. What we're talking about is allowing talent to be in on WWE programming. We're not talking about an exchange, right? But uh, but I'm talking in the, the scenario of um the Ric Flair. Christian if, thing. I mean, if AEW ever starts doing a Hall of Fame, then we'll see something. Okay. Uh, I mean, there really hasn't been any big, uh, you know, AEW to WWE moves yet. There hasn't. We don't see and, it. And, you know, when, when that happens, and make no mistake, they it will happen. Oh, absolutely. It, ab- it absolutely will happen. It, it, it's, they're, they're waiting for the final uh, levy to break on that dam because... It, it, it's gonna happen, and some some might even say that WWE is in prime position for this. And who knows? Maybe the WWE is even somehow unknowingly responsible. Well, yeah, well let's say yes, they are responsible for the influx. So the the overabundance of talent that AEW has that eventually that glass ceiling on the the, the talent limitations that's gonna fucking break. Yeah. Uh, oh oh wait yes there there had there was one major AEW release uh over the week uh the hairlines of the young bucks have said goodbye. Oh we was the best in their future endeavors. Yes. We don't know where they're going, but we know they ain't coming back. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, that will conclude the news coverage of um, tonight. Um, and now a quick word from our sponsors. Rogue Energy, the only gaming drink company in the world with four unique product lines to suit your task at hand, whether it be juices, shakes, smoothies, and everything else in between their low-calorie, no-sugar energy formula is the perfect alternative to sugar-filled canned energy drinks and sodas. Their extreme formula provides the most energy, focus, and sports performance possible. Their hydration line offers focus, ingredients without the added caffeine. Drink it anytime you're thirsty. And their shake formula is so delicious. Who doesn't love a cookies and cream, zero-calorie energy milkshake first and foremost they've designed every rogue product line with performance and effectiveness in mind it is critical that you look at the nutrition panels of drinks when comparing options there are countless off brands out there that are presenting low quality poorly dosed formulas that amount to expensive caffeine water every formula they produce is designed with optimal levels of high quality ingredients additionally you won't find a powdered gaming drink brand that dissolves better no need to have chalky textures in your drink their taste profiles are unmatched, specifically designed for gamers, athletes, students, entrepreneurs, people with hectic schedules, individuals with low energy, podcasters who can't shut up, people who are health conscious, and so much more. 
great as both a pre-workout and as a coffee energy drink replacement. Specifically designed every Rogue product line to be the best gaming drink on the planet. Rogue energy, more energy, more focus, more wins. Use promo code Wrestling E for ten percent off your next purchase. And we are wrestling with WWE NXT Takeover War Games 2021. 2.0. 2.0. Yeah. Damn, I fucked it up. All right. Um. Speaking of things that were fucked up. This paid preview. Um, I mean, it was okay. Just kind of seemed like an episode, just a a high level episode of NXT with like yep. two big matches. Yep, basically. Um, yeah, and uh, let me just pull up my. Notes here. The first match out, we got the only Kaylee Ray that matters. Cecil Raquel Gonzalez, Ten Shirai here, uh, and Cora Jade, female Darby Allen, defeating Darby's ex. Uh, uh, the girl that looks like a dentist, Tomb Raider Trish Stratus, and Dakota Kai. Scoot mm. your dots on the match. Girl that looks like a dentist. Is, is, that, is that your name for Gigi Dolan or for JC Jane? JC J. <laughs> she doesn't look like an, a this from maybe um, I don't know the the region of Pittsburgh. I mean, yeah, she does look a bit like Isaac Yankum. No, he's from Knoxville. He's from Tennessee. Oh, <laughs> oh I'm sorry. Y- Yankum is what I do uh, when she she's on TV. Um, no. <laughs> I mean, she has had some matches where you want it's preferred than, you know, watching the match. I mean, uh, honestly, I thought Gigi Dolan was Becky Lynch at first, so. I think uh, a lot of people thought that as well. I mean, I the mean, way that she's, she takes yeah. bumps, it's kind of like she's a stunt double. I mean, look at her with glasses on. Yeah, let's play the game Becky Lynch or Gigi Dolan. <laughs> And that's a a new game we're gonna play. Um, this was this was so the opposite of what a war games match should be. First of all, the face team should never have the advantage. I mean, isn't it so cliche that the bad guys always get the the one man advantage? Yes, but that's the thing about being the heel is that War Games is designed to be that, you know, possibly, you know, the the good guy is overcoming the odds. That's what War Games always was, and. You know, WCW never had matches for it. They always had the coin toss. Something that they could always easily manipulate. It was now a, it's all about... A two-faced coin. Yeah, and, and now it's all about getting mileage out of, uh, you know, uh, a, la- a ladder match. Which, that, that, that's not, you know, we're doing something to death. Um... I mean, props to Io Shirai pulling a Mel Gibson, or or, or should I say a, a Riggs, on uh, on Cora Jade. Oh my God! Popping. Yeah, that was oh. that was the most horrible thing in the match, and it wasn't even against each uh, each other. 
it was a soft inflicted. Yeah, I I really thought Cora had had fucked up her arm. I really did until Eo friggin' I part of me wondered if Eo really was popping it back into place. I was just gonna say, I mean it do you really doubt like Eo couldn't pop her shoulder back in? Uh, oh oh there's no doubt in my mind she actually could. Uh that being said, I don't think that the WWE would have allowed that on TV. <laughs> I mean, if they did, EO would have been fired. Which is insane a lot nowadays in, you know, NXT. And then, and then, and by the way, the fans are assholes for, you know, for chanting, you can't skate. You know, somehow Izzy's parents are still sabotaging the NXT crowd. Um, Bastards. She's signed now. Leave her alone. You know, Channing, you can't skate. You can't skate. And I challenge all of you to skate, you, you pansies. Uh, but then Cora J gets the win with a friggin' schoolgirl. I mean, they kind of, kind of come out of nowhere and maybe it wasn't, like, the best way to end the match. It was more like, Vaughn, it was like, oh, she won. You know what I mean? Yeah, and and thus toxic attraction is oh god. There, there, there was promise. No, there wasn't. There was <laughs> No, I really think there was. In what and, in what outlook of that? Give me I an example. Like considering that this is the most Mandy Rose has ever spoken in her entire career. The way I Ooh. see it is, it's just this uh, group uh, toxic handshakes. I mean, attraction um, is just to promote Mandy Rose. If you had JCJ and Gigi Dolan, I'll be nice here and say just a tag team, they would not be as over as they are right now. It's just big, they're successful by association. And the thing that, because they are not, they were not ready to be put in that position, I feel. Because they do not, they're not maybe the best on Tomos, and I kind of equivalent it to um, Legacy, Randy Orton, Cody Rhodes, and Ted DiBiase. Well, it was the Randy Orton so and they were just kind of the Iggy's. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or uh, Orton was Iggy Pop, and Cody and Ted were the Stooges. Yes. Um, and of course, um, Dakota Kai was put, literally put into a trash can. I can't help but think that was a metaphor for her career. Well, at least now they know that, um, they can save money on Dakota's airfare because she fits into most overhead baggage spaces. Very true. And I did hear a rumor that on Peacock, if you put in a special code, now this is all alleged, not, it could be real, it could not be real. If you put in a special code, Manny Rose's clothes come off during the match. Because she's too really, you, you, really you, you, you're going with the nude raider, a nude raider joke. Yes, <laughs> James, I thought you were better than that. You know that I'm not. 
Let's move on, please. Uh, Tag Team Championship match, Imperium, Marcel Bartel, and Fabian Eichner defeated Kylie, Kyle O'Reilly Parts and Ron Wagner in 14 minutes and 52 seconds. Wait, you, you, wait, you're forgetting the third person on that team. His Ron Wagner's eye, eyebrow ridge. Yeah. That's not a four head, that's a five head. I'd even say it's a six head. Um, you know that episode of Futurama where they go to Oktoberfest and they find the Neanderthals and Fry hits his head and it gets all swollen? That That's what Von Wagner is. A, a, a Neanderthal. Not in, and... I never thought we'd see a bigger eyebrow ridge than the Great Collie. And that guy's eight foot tall. Von Wagner's new name, the not so great Collie. The okay Collie. Uh, okay. Okay. I'm trying to think of a song like that, but um Oh and of course what happens? A uh, turn. And now, uh, I mean, Stevie Wonder blindfolded could have saw that coming. Ray Charles saw that coming, and he's fucking dead. I mean, they brought out the Ouija board to to find out what Ray Charles thought about this match. I mean, I mean, Captain Olivia showed up in my front door. Kicked me in the nuts, then teabagged me that this was happening. This was that obvious. And second of all, you should really call the cops if all that happened to you. Um. Okay. And did you happen to no- notice that um, Marcel Bartel was wearing the um, the belt upside down? Was that just yes. me? Because who doesn't love the Tetris Peace XN Championships? Yeah. Um, on the show, it happened, and O'Reilly and w- Wagner did not win. Shocker. Hell vs. Hell match. Cameron Grimes defeated Duke Hudson in 10 minutes and 35 seconds. Uh, I gotta say, uh, Cameron Grimes, clean cut, handsome son of a bitch. Yeah, I mean, a man cleans up nice. I mean, I didn't even recognize it was him at at first. I mean, I was about to say, what's Trevor Lee doing on NXT? Uh, (laughs) but. The fact that Duke Hudson is ashamed of his baldness. Or rather, technically, no, it's not baldness, it's a hairstyle. His hair can grow back. I don't know if he's realized that yet. Well, uh, he's not acting like it. I mean, he could go the Molly Holly route and put a wig on. No, technically, he did the Kurt Angle. Oh, okay. Um, one thing I will say about um this NXT is that it seems like they really rushed a lot of these rivalries. Like this Duke Hudson, Cameron Grimes, Heather the hell match maybe would have happened at the next takeover rather than this one. The one thing I'll say I mean, about the yeah. Triple H's reign was that he always let it bleed. Even if it was maybe for way too long. I mean, they 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 were they they were rushing people to gimmicks long before they were rushing rivalries. I mean, all of a sudden, Duke Hudson's a poker player. Okay, great. He he's an Australian. Who, who 
excels at an American game of gambling. Great. Be nice if this if if this was given to us. If this was if any indication of this was given to us during the NXT breakout tournament. But no, no, no. Those guys had to have no gimmicks. It, it, except for Odyssey Jones, who's like, "Yeah, hey, I'm the foot fat black guy." But the uh... let make no mistake, I love me some fun fat black guys. They're the best. That's why I'm still sad about Keith Lee. <laughs> Keith Lee was all muscle. Odyssey Jones, man's fun at parties. I'll I will give him that. Uh, but he wasn't even fun during his uh that tournament. He was the the mad guy, the mean guy. One more for the him. mad guy. Yeah. All right. Uh. Still, I mean, it, and let's be real, two cuts and really sounds like I came out of the what's your wrestling name generator. The box of with the box of gimmicks. Yep. I'm surprised they didn't call him. I'm surprised they didn't make him a garbage collector. No, I think that's our next guy that we're going to be talking about. Um, that brings us to our next match. Um, Roderick will be in AEW in six months strong versus uh Kevin Owens cosplayer Joe Gacy and. Uh, Oh, it's cosplayer. In uh, eight minutes and seven seconds. I, I mean, Joe Gacy is... His gimmick is that he's Reddit. <laughs> That's his gimmick. He's Reddit. All about inclusion and snowflakes and... and, 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 and fuck him! Even with that, uh, Fuck the snowflakes. Even that, uh, Brock Lesnar light guy in the, behind them. Gunnar Harland, or uh, as he was previously known, Parker Boudreau. Harland, brother of Warlow, is what I'm calling him. Had That's so much. Out. He had so much promise. Did he go? Uh, uh, he did. He 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 actually did. And that 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 development has been sacrificed just so people can make Brock Lesnar comparisons on Tuesday nights. It's Tuesday night, and you know what that means. Yeah, it means I'm watching anything else but NXT. day. <sighs> Couldn't be more. And that brings us um, to the main event, a World Games match. Team 2.0, Braun Breaker, Carmelo Hayes, Grayson Waller, Tony D'Angelo defeated Team Black and Gold, Tommaso Ciampa. Johnny Dynamite, Pete Dunn, and LA Knight in 38 minutes and 14 seconds. Um, real, realistically speaking, watching this match, Black and Gold would have murdered these people. No? Yes, absolutely. Like, if this I, I... was a shoot fight, Black and Gold this would have ended in the first five minutes. Yeah, I mean, and again, friggin' putting, ma making black and gold the faces. Like, I would under, I would even understand if they didn't make either team face or heel, but they went clearly that that two point were the heels. And, and and now we're we're back to square one. Where oh, forget Braun Breaker was part of the heel team, but remember that he won. Yeah. Or or 
forget that, you know, L.A. Knight was part of the face team that he lost, but you know what? He gets to go nail a piece of ass. And, the, uh, and Co meanwhile, Cody Hawk's watching going, that's my guy. Yes, he is. <laughs> oh, where have we gone when Pat McAfee was in this match last year, and it was probably one of the best War Games matches of all time, and now we have Tibner Gardner's in this match, and it's. The drizzling shits. We have. I would say it's the drizzling shits, but it's what's. We have we have every you know full blooded Italian character, in, combined into one, in in, in Tony D'Angelo. We have Grayson Waller, who I was actually starting to get behind as a face, because he looked. He looked like a fun guy, not a mushroom. He he looked like he you know he was gonna be someone to root for. But then they turned and, him heel on Tuesday, correct? Uh, yeah, basically yes. Uh, Carmelo Hayes. Okay, I can see Carmelo Hayes now. Carmelo Hayes is the only one that has some type of accolades behind him before coming to China. Yes. And, and, you know, and Braun, with time, Braun will be a star. Unless uh, Vince McMahon gets a hold of him and he gets fired. I mean, I mean, if, if Vince is drooling over Austin Theory, I mean, then, then that's not, oh, that's not creepy in any way. Uh, uh, Braun, yeah, Braun, I think Braun would have been better off had he, had they not just pushed him immediately to challenge Champa. Isn't that what they're doing? Yes, but again, then if you're gonna push him like that, then then Braun should have wanted Halloween Havoc. I mean, okay, yes, he does make the argue that they're they're one and one, but now Bre Breaker's gonna face Roderick Strong for. The cruiserweight championship, which now no longer has a weight limit, remember that. It's about it's not about weight limits, it's about no limits, really. I mean let, let's say we're probably going to see some sort of um in fact I wouldn't be surprised if we end up seeing if Breaker wins and then we get to, and then he ends Trump up gets fired. Beating... No, in fact, I think Champa resigned. Did he? I'm pretty sure Chomp is going to be around for a while. Oh, well, that's good. He he he's Isn't he's one of the few, and, and Champa also he's somebody who understands the business. And he knows that if he decides to do what Adam Cole did, he knows he's not going to have that same success. You think that he wouldn't be what he, uh, what everything not, he accomplished in NXT? Not, not in AEW. I mean. Adam Cole's going to waste. He is going to waste. 
I I disagree at this point. I think that they're wait they're waiting, they're biding their time, and there's something really big coming up in the works for Adam Cole. It's just a wait and see scenario at this point. But if there's nothing comes of it, then yeah, of course they wasted them. You know, and they, you know, they, and they, that that brings us to I guess I guess we'll we'll get to it here. I guess that brings us to Johnny. Yeah. I uh, I don't know if you've seen the tweet I I put out, but I essentially said that Johnny Gargano leaving AEW is like AJ Styles leaving TNA wait, back in wait, 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 Gargano leaving AEW? No, leaving NXT. My bad. Um, and I mean, it was such a, a hot topic that our friend uh, at the Grateful Yardy podcast, Drew, did an act, a whole episode making that comparison himself. But where do you stand on that? Well, considering that Kyle O'Reilly and Gargano both gave farewell speeches after the show went off the air, but the fact that they used this to, to get Grayson Waller over I mean, they did the exact same thing with John Moxley when uh, when he left WWE. They put over Bobby Lashley. Oh, yeah, true. Uh, hmm. Does Gargano is Gargano really gone? Why should he stay? That's also a good point. There's no reason. There's no reason for him to stay. It, he's made it clear he doesn't want to. He doesn't want to be part of Raw or SmackDown. Which is I mean, kind of the whole point of NXT is to go to NXT and then get to Raw and SmackDown. Yeah, but you know. It seems like Johnny was holding on to this, or rather, the last person to hold on this, hold on to this notion that NXT was supposed to be on the same level as Raw and SmackDown. And at some, at one point, they they did, they was, they kind of was, but you know, obviously that didn't happen. And you know, the fact that. I for for some reason I thought that Johnny already had one child. I thought Candace this was Candace's second time being pregnant. Oh uh, no. This is for the some first reason, time. Baby Wesley. For, February twenty twenty two. Um And that's an interesting I, oh, continue. Honestly, I don't think Gargano wants to go to AEW. Again, I think Gargano is another one who knows the business and is seeing this. Uh, I mean, Gargano, no, no taller than Jungle Boy. I think I think Gargano's future is as an NXT trainer. Hmm. So you think his Phil World speech was a retirement speech? I think so. And I I for some reason I see him working alongside HBK. Hmm. Interesting. 
What about Kyle O'Reilly? His contract's up as well, and uh, WWE made, made an effort to try and keep him. Um, is it just a matter of time we see him next to uh, Bobby Fish on AEW TV? You know, they, they made... You know, the, the, the Bucks have made specific mentions that the era is dead. What's not the era? It's Red Dragon. Yes, but considering you're seeing Bobby Fish, you know, in the graphics with the Young Bucks and Adam Cole, you know, on in, in match promos, If 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 O'Reilly shows up, God, like if O'Reilly shows up in AEW, it's not to join; it's to get Bobby Fish away from them. (laughs) That'd be an interesting storyline if they actually do it. And then you could you could even have the you know Young Bucks versus Red Dragon, uh you know over and yeah you have Adam Cole debating on who to be loyal to. That would be interesting. Like, but then O'Reilly gets shoehorned as a tag team wrestler for the rest of his career. I mean, he already was shoehorned as a tag team wrestler. I, I mean, kind of feel like but, that's the story of his career, anyway. I mean, O'Reilly's, honestly, aside from those matches, the match of the years he had with, you know, with DIY, some of O'Reilly's best work was against Balor, against Cole, in, sing, in singles matches. One of my all-time favorite matches is um, Kyle O'Reilly versus Kushida from Best of the Super Juniors. You will never see a better pure wrestling match in your entire life. Um, right. That being said, he's ha- he's had the ball before, and I don't want to say he dropped it, but it just never worked out for him. I don't know why. It's just, um, again, I don't know. He has all the skills, but it just doesn't seem to connect or resonate for some reason. And uh, that brings us to the last person. Uh, what happens to Candice LeRae if Johnny's leaving uh, WWE and she's still contracted? Well, then at least somebody's got a somebody's bringing in the paycheck. Right, true. I um, mean, uh, you know, yeah. Oh, and and just one more last thing that. It as of now, it's you know they've 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 had a, a, a supposed farewell. Johnny Gargano and Travis LeRae. No, uh, Gargano and O'Reilly. Yes. Uh, I mean they're both going to be fathers and. I mean, ten hours ago, it was believed that they were going to sign con they renew. Yeah. As of one hour ago, it, they're both gone. Well, not uh, gone, but they just well, haven't well, signed well, with well, 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 Yeah. Uh. Well. 
I mean, maybe this canning impact you. Does impact have a chance to get any of these guys? No. It's just WWE and AEW. At no, point. but Impact would probably use them better. Oh, without a doubt. They put belts on. The, every guy, you uh, you sign the contract, you get a belt. And, uh, don't forget, next week on Impact, competing for the 15th place championship belt. Watson, Reed. And then, competing for the You Deserve a Belt belt. <laughs> in, in fact, I'm, I'm in fact, in fact, I'm going to, I'm going to start a YouTube series on the new WWE game called You Deserve a Belt, where everybody's a champion. Yay! Except you, James. Bastard. All right. Uh, thumbs down. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I didn't even get to the question. <laughs> I, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, thumbs down. That being said, is there even a reason to watch NXT going into 2022? Yes, and I will sum it up in two words. Fucking Chucky. <laughs> you know, I I love the fact that Gargano said, "Oh, by the way, Chucky's not coming on." Uh, did did he forget that the season finale was last week? Oh, uh, nope. obviously nobody told him, but nobody re nobody realized that the season finale of Chucky was last week. So I mean. And they're not, they're not airing it in syndication, as far as I know. I mean, since the entire series is now on Peacock. Isn't it a sad situation that the best thing out of NXT was uh, a cameo by Chucky? Oh, just wait till season two. Of 2.0? Of Chucky. All right, I think it's time to get out of here. Uh, that'll conclude our coverage of NXT uh, 2.0 Takeover War Games 2021 review. If you like what we're doing, please like, subscribe, comment, vote on YouTube and Castbox. Of course, this was sponsored by Rogue Energy and Player One Coffee. Um, join us this uh this Wednesday as we interview Cody Hawk and follow Wrestling with Entertainment on Twitter and Instagram at Wrestling with E for everything uh, Wrestling with Entertainment related. Uh, follow us individually as well, and at JamesJ993. You can find Coleco at I am Coleco, and where can they find Scooter? As always, find me on Twitter at ScooterDust with the remix, possibly coming uh, for uh, uh, possibly coming to you on day one ish. Uh, still up in the air about that. More to come from the remix from that, but definitely with the Boyle Rumble. Uh, and of course, catch me along with Rico Constantino Jr. and the rest of the Smoking Dragons clan for Thankmas. It's when we give back. It's all the raising money for St. Jude. A great cause. So come and join us. Twitch.tv back to the Smoking Dragons. Give whatever you can. It's the time of the year to give back to those. Who need it the most? For Coleco Yacht Scooter Dust, I'm James Shea, and this has been Wrestling with Entertainment. Hey guys, this is Brutal Bob Evans from Hangs with Bob Seminars and TheWrestleLife.com, and you are listening 
to Wrestling with Entertainment, one of my favorite podcasts in the whole wide world. Hey, folks, this is the Colossal Mike Law, and you are listening to Wrestling with Entertainment. Enjoy the show. Support these guys. We appreciate it very much. We'll see you at ringside.